Uh, that's kind of why I started Drive Cultures because I wanted to I wanted to have people to talk cars with, kind of with an, sort of an audience, just because it's it's so ingrained in my being that I I, I can't not talk about cars. I'm Jerry Horton. I play guitar for the band Papa Roach. Uh, the love of cars came first. My dad uh, did a bunch of stuff with cars ever since before I was born and, you know, built cars. He built, basically built a bug from scratch, uh, raced it, did drag racing, um, raced guys in Camaros and Mustangs and blew by him and made him mad and I got to ride in the passenger seat. Uh, I don't remember any particular one car. We, we did a lot of, uh, we, we went to drag races a lot and I remember, you know, going to see the, the nitro funny cars and the, the, the dragsters and, and we went to Sonoma Raceway quite a bit. And uh, we went to the bug meets and we went to the, the, the nationals there. And, and a lot of what I remember is like the, the night racing and, and, you know, always, always having to just plug my ears and, and do that. That was, that was really the first, first things that I remember. That's like asking a musician what his favorite song is. Like it's That's it's cool. almost impossible. <laughs> uh, I really, if if I had to really boil it down, I would probably have to pick uh, the McLaren F1, just because you know at the time that it came out, it was such a groundbreaking piece of machinery and was a lot. Of, it was a first for a lot of things for a production car. It was very special and in you know, in a lot of in a lot of design elements and and you know powertrains and you know it held the record for the fastest car, but it was also something that was very involving to drive. Of course, only from what I hear, anyway. I was I was lucky enough to be able to see one in in the show in the McLaren showroom in London, which is a very small room in an old part of London. It was right next to Hyde Park. You know, I got to to look at it, take pictures, and not many people had ever seen one before. So I think that even still today with all of the, the, new, the newer cars that are faster, that if, if I ever was lucky enough to win the lottery or something, that would be it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like, it's so many. Um, if I had to choose one, I think maybe uh, let's just say Master of Puppets. Uh, my favorite band. I mean, there's so many. But I guess if I had to choose one, it would probably have to be Metallica, just because they they were they had already had so much great music before I really got into them and then even after they you know after that they it was just like it's just it's our generation's Led Zeppelin basically you know it's just so much great music they were around at that time where I was you know at the impressionable age and and where I was interested in learning guitar and that kind of stuff uh, I mean I would say probably the two biggest influences would have to be Hetfield and I don't know. There's there's a lot. There's a lot. But in in listening to a lot of Metallica stuff, like you could tell the difference between Kirk and and James, and his playing just seems so powerful to me. Just the way that he did it, and it, you know, he's not like a lead player, 
but you could feel it, you know, it wasn't just something that you could hear, like you could actually feel his playing. I guess it would have to be probably him and David Gilmore. I think because I listened to so much metal that technical ability kind of, I wouldn't say it kind of went over my head or it, di it didn't really like, it didn't bore me, but it seemed like almost anybody could do it, where Gilmore was somebody who played with so much feel that you could right away tell that was him. So that was like something that I really uh, was impressed by. Yeah, so that was uh, um, in seeing them play. Um, I, we had a, a couple of mutual friends and I actually, uh, you know, the girl that I was seeing at the time knew, she went to a different high school and knew the rest of the guys. And so that's how, that's how Jacoby got my number and that's how he was able to pester me. Our biggest hit is still Last Resort. Um, you know, that's just, that's the song that everybody knows us by. Uh, and it's funny because sometimes we'll see even um, internet memes with different variations of, you know, it's like, what is it? Something like cut my life into pizza, you know, something with a knife and fork kind of deal. It's, and that's kind of when you know you become sort of a part of pop culture is when you get that, that level of, you know, ribbing or, you know, people kind of make fun of you that way, so. Um, Last Resort came about, uh, the music started with uh, Tobin played it on piano. And at the time we were into hip hop and that was uh, something that he was playing on the piano and then decided to transpose it to a guitar riff. and. Um, and actually the vocals, the lyrics were, were for a different song and they weren't fitting over that other musical piece. So he kind of brought it in and, and it all just went right away. Not as much as me. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of why I started Drive Cultures because I wanted to I wanted to have people to talk cars with and you know I do talk to my dad about stuff and, and then I have some friends but um, I wanted to be able to express myself in that in that way kind of with an, sort of an audience just because it's it's so ingrained in my being that I I, I can't not talk about cars. My concept for Drive Culture is to kind of, it's to expose people to different types of subcultures, you know, where some, you know, some guys are, are only into sports cars or some guys are only into muscle cars, kind of exposing them to other genres uh, and really not just presenting them with, you know, hey, you like Camaros, but check this Ferrari out. Um, going a lot more in depth to it and into why Porsche guys are Porsche guys, what they really love about them and, and really just getting down to the core of it and, and then pre presenting that. And I would love to be able to get to a point with it to do events where we can bring all these different types of cars together to where people can actually experience the cars themselves in, in, the, in the environment that they're supposed to be in to where like, you know, a guy that's got a Lamborghini comes and, and sees this uh, 32 Roadster and why that's so cool is because, you know, it's, it's the generation of hot rodding. It, you know, it's, it's, it comes from a time where guys had really basic cars, but they wanted to make them go as fast as they could. And having the simplicity of it, and you know the, the the sound and the history of it, getting in that car and having somebody experience that, and possibly 
changing their perspective on things. That's, that's the ultimate goal. My dad came to me and he said, okay, so do you want to get an old car that we can work on together or do you want to get a newer one that's maybe a little bit, bit more reliable? And I said, uh, I think it'd be cool to get an old car. A couple weeks later I said, I think I found something that might be cool. And I said, oh, what is it? And he said, I found this 63 Nova. We went and looked at it and you know, it, was, it, it didn't, the body didn't look great, but it was a cheap runner and, and it looked like it was going to be fun to work on. And a week went by and he said, I don't think we're going to get that car. And I just went, what? You know, and he said, I think it's too much power for you. And I'm going, who says that? That's ridiculous, you know? And then, so we ended up getting a uh, four cylinder Fox body Mustang. And it was, uh, it was a bummer, but looking back on it, it's probably the, for the best because I was in five accidents in that car. I drove the piss out of it and, you know, I managed to get in enough trouble in a four cylinder. So I can't even imagine what would happen if I would have had that Nova. I mean, I, you know, I don't know anybody that's into cars that wouldn't love to have different, you know, a bunch of different cars. I would, um, obviously, like I said, a McLaren F1 uh, is the ultimate for me. Um, I'd, I'd love to have, uh, you know, maybe a, an old racing Porsche, um, some type of manual Ferrari, you know, maybe a 360, because still that body shape is still really, really great. And then also, I think it would be really cool to have a Duesenberg, you know, just a really big machine. Um, I'm into all of it, you know, and, and can appreciate people that, that are into a bunch of different styles and types. I'd love to have a 32 Ford. And you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a 32 Ford. It could be a 29, it could be a 30, you know. Um, but uh, it's just such a classic car that, it's a classic among classics, you know, so. Um, I wouldn't call it cherished, but I have uh, a, p a chunk of the Bondo that came off the Mercury. <laughs> it's about that thick. And it's about four different kinds of Bondo. And uh, it still has the original, like the paint on it. So I have that hanging up on the wall in the garage. I have a lot of stuff from our, like, from our early, early years that's like tucked away in a box, you know, the, our first tapes that we, our first recordings that we made. and you know, magazine clippings and that kind of stuff. I have a little collection, you know, I have, a, I have a lot of the guitars that I've taken on tour, but, you know, as we go along, I kind of, I'll either sell them off for charity or, uh, you know, I, I'll give them to cl really close friends of mine and um, that kind of stuff. I don't really keep a lot of them around. I have a few, a few special ones that I keep, but I'm not really a guitar collector. <laughs> Yeah, I have, um, I've been playing Schechter guitars for uh, six, 17 years now. And they've given me signature series guitars. You know, we've, we do a new one every couple of years. They give me guitars and they give me guitar cabinets. They, they make amps and cabinets now. Having a signature series is kind of like, it's a kind of a dream of any, any guitar player, you know. It's, uh, it's just cool. It's, it's something that you can put your own design style into it and, and of course, you don't want to do it, go too crazy because you want people to buy it too. But yeah, it's it's amazing, and the, and they've they've been really supportive in everything that I've done, and and that's why I'm still around with them because they're just a great company. Having people sing back to you, it's energizing. We do a lot of shows where you know maybe it's not our show, and we're on with somebody else, and and they're kind of not as receptive as we'd want them to be. And that's when it's, that's when it feels a little bit like work. But when, when the crowd is, is super energized and they're singing, it just, it's better than 
any drug. It's it's like it's really hard to explain, but for us, you know, especially that we like to we like to bounce around and and kind of go crazy on stage. It it makes it really easy. Like we just seems like we just channel that energy through us, and then it kind of becomes this circle, this cycle of energy exchange. Yeah. I like racing. Have you ever gone go-kart racing? I've gone go-kart racing kind of in the indoor stuff. I used to, we used to do a lot of it actually in, I want to say it was like 2001, 2002, where we, we toured a lot with this band called Head PE and uh, we would do kind of day off racing competitions where we would, we would just, that was what we did. We would wake up on a day off and go find a kart track. And uh, we did a lot of it in Europe actually, where there was like a little less uh, regulation, you know, less, less uh, worry about insurance, that kind of stuff. So it was a lot more fun. And uh, there was a lot of, a lot more variation in the tracks and stuff where there was like, one was like a, indoor but it was a two level thing where it was like a two story so you would go up in the building you would go up you know and do 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 a track uh at the top level and then there would it would kind of go back down so that you know there was a lot of that kind of stuff so we did that um i've done you know the indoor kart racing but uh pretty excited to try this outdoor stuff yeah